From the studios of Farm Journal Broadcast, this is Ag Today. Promises of help for victims of a trade war. Trump meeting another U.S. ally on trade. In analysis, the ag economy with retaliatory tariffs. In just in the grain uh, soy sector, we're probably down around $21 billion of mm -hmm. revenue in that sector alone. And how butter is helping us to remember a holiday film classic. Ag Day, presented by the Chevy Silverado. High strength steel for high strength dependability. Good morning, I'm Betsy Jibben in for Clinton Griffiths. The Trump administration announcing details on a plan to aid billions of dollars to farmers to try to protect them from tariffs on agricultural products. USDA announcing $12 billion worth of temporary aid will be available to farmers under the Commodity Credit Corporation Charter Act. Three possible programs will be administered by USDA under the CCC. One is the Market Facilitation Program, which will provide incremental payments with direct assistance to farmers who produce products such as soybeans, sorghum, wheat, cotton, hogs, and dairy. The second is a Food Purchase and Distribution Program, where USDA will purchase different types of fruits, nuts, rice, beef, and pork products, which could be used for food pantries and nutritional programs. The third is a trade promotion program with a goal to use the private sector to promote trade and help create new marketing programs. Officials saying payments may start to go to producers in September, but it depends on the crop. That the correct action from other nations would be to stop their bad behavior not to retaliate with illegal tariffs. As we made clear today, this administration will not stand by while our hardworking agricultural producers bear the brunt of unfriendly and illegal tariffs enacted by foreign nations. As details start to unfold, some farmers saying they want the tariffs to stop. I like my politics boring. I would be much happier, and I think the industry would be much happier within all of agriculture if we eliminated tariffs, they're not good for agriculture. Mexico and Canada have been wonderful trading partners and considering that almost 20% of our dairy products are exported, we need to maintain these relationships or else our prices will crash, continue to crash even further as they tend to be going down on the news of tariffs, increased tariffs. Earlier on Tuesday, President Trump tweeting, quote, tariffs are the greatest. Remember, we are the piggy bank that's being robbed. All will be great. Tomorrow, the president is scheduled to visit Iowa, a state whose farmers are feeling the effects from tariffs on both soybeans and pork. Multiple hearings on trade are occurring this week on Capitol Hill. The U.S. Trade Representative continuing its two-day public hearing later today regarding proposed tariffs on $16 billion worth of Chinese products. The House Ways and Means Subcommittee holding a hearing earlier in the week with representatives from different businesses testifying on Section 232 on steel and aluminum tariffs. Back in the Midwest, Vermeer Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer Mark Kaur says the tariffs have an impact even on domestic product. We, we import very little steel uh, from China, uh, but uh, the marketplace exploded on us from a price perspective. And so we've seen in a lot of situations, we've seen where our steel is 50% higher than we were paying to build balers and other products just six months ago. So it's a concern for sure because uh, that's big. Core says the company has been fortunate to not have a lot of inflation to steel costs for quite some time in the past. President Trump is scheduled to meet with the leadership of the European Union later today in Washington, where the conversations might get tense. The president reportedly warning U.S. trade partners that he'll impose more sanctions unless they negotiate a fair deal. Trump will be meeting with European Commission's president and trade minister in talks aimed at heading off a trade war. One official says Europe will take two paths. One is to reduce tariffs on European cars shipped to the U.S. The other path is to negotiate a free trade agreement between the two economies. A mix of tornadoes sweeping through Iowa late last week, destroying buildings and farm ground in its path. One tornado hitting Bondurant, Iowa, demolishing farm fields. A farmer in the area thinks the tornado wiped out 40 of his acres. He figures with today's prices, he's going to lose $25,000. We're looking at a lot of down corn. 
Um, the, the tornado started on our farm about three quarters of a mile west here, came through on, on a northeastern path and continued on for about another quarter of a mile. So about a mile long strip of damage. I would say it's averaging about 200 feet wide. Almost complete destruction. Um, I don't think we'll be able to save any of the corn that got knocked down. We'll hear from Newbie later this week on Ag Day. Also taking a hit is JBS Meats. The company's distribution center in Marshalltown, Iowa was hit. The plant was forced to close for three days. Our partners at Farm Journal's Pork says the company is now running again, but it was forced to dispose 24 million pounds of pork. Some crop damage in Arkansas from a weekend storm. Mike Hoffman has details and crop comments. Good morning, Betsy. A weekend storm in Arkansas unleashed a barrage of large hail and high winds that damaged some farms and fields. Take a look at this field. Nothing but stalks left behind in this soybean field after a hailstorm hit near the town of McCray in White County, Arkansas. About 20 minutes south, other fields got hit hard, leaving soybean leaves on the ground. The storm started in the northwest and tracked southeastward. At times, the bowline generated 90 mile per hour winds. And this crop won't yield any beans to sell due to long standing triple digit heat in North Texas. So the farmer decided to bale what's left for livestock. So at least he'll get something out of it. And taking a look at the wind speed forecast, the northeast, northern plains, a little bit windy uh, to start the day. As we head through the day then, a lot of the areas through the northern plains over into the northeast and the four corner region seeing a little bit windy conditions. Tomorrow morning, not a lot to start, but as we head through the afternoon hours, we'll see things pick up again. Northern plains, Great Lakes, and the parts of the northeast. We'll have your forecast coming up, but first here are some hometown temps. Plan for the unexpected with weather forecast updates. Local forecasts are delivered right to your cell phone each morning, making planning a little bit easier. Just text WEATHER6 to 31313 to get started. Next in agribusiness, tariffs and how they're shaking up the ag economy. And it's hot out there, but it's Christmas in July at the Ohio State Fair. Find out how butter is helping us to remember a holiday film classic. You'll shoot your eye out? My mother must have gotten the Miss Shields. There could be no other explanation. Yellow Shields! Let's see how the markets closed on Tuesday. For that, we'll head to the CME floor in Chicago. We had President Trump tweeting how much he loves the tariffs. He was saying tariffs are the greatest. Uh, and you would think that would be a little bit bearish soybeans, but it wasn't. Soybeans have, have been strong really most of the session. Um, interestingly so, especially since you look at crop conditions that we saw yesterday afternoon with soybean conditions gaining a point where it's 70% good to excellent, this is a very well rated crop. Yet, once again, we're uh, stronger here during the day on Tuesday at, at points being up more than, more than double digits uh, and looking at a reversal higher day. Reversal higher day, we've seen three of those now since the beginning of July and that is really kind of suggesting that maybe the lows are in for soybeans and that we have some upside potential here in the near term. Corn struggling a little bit down a little bit on the day at one point down six cents but kind of around the three cent lower level here at the end of the day uh, just based on the idea that crop conditions did not decline yesterday like a lot of the trade expected they would. Uh, it is a very good rated corn crop. We had some good weather over the weekend. We got good weather in the forecast. We had cattle and feeder cattle down just a little bit, not rocketing lower, but just kind of pulling back off of recent highs as we've, as we've run into some very key support. Uh, but overall, the market still looks good. Anyways, we'll see what happens. This is Ted Seifert of Zaner Ag Hedge coming to you from the CME floor. In agribusiness, we're taking a closer look at retaliatory tariffs and its impact on the ag economy. Clinton Griffiths joins us from the desk. Dan Huber, The Huber Report, our guest here at the Agribusiness Desk today. Dan, as we look at the overall ag economy, obviously the threat and the retaliatory tariffs weighing heavily on our markets and our prices. What's your take on what's that costing our business? Well, when you, uh, and granted, you maybe can't lay all of it at the uh, the doorstep of, of the trade tariffs. And sure, the, right. Embargo talk, however you, want to, however you want to assess it. But when you look at where we were when all of this began as a topic and the threats began to be tossed around and where we stood today, we've probably, uh, in just in the grain uh, soy sector, we're probably down around $21 billion of mm -hmm. revenue in wow. that sector alone. Then you step over to the livestock, and of course, particularly in the hogs. Hogs have been uh, harshly, harshly hurt by this because of, you know, we are dealing with 
are three of our biggest export markets in Absolutely. Mexico, Canada, and China. And, uh, you know, we're probably looking at $40 million a week in losses compared to where we were pre-report. So, I mean, it, it, it's devastating, really, across this entire farm sector. Yeah, we're seeing that on prices. Are we starting to see that come out of farmers' pockets? The, uh, you, you know, because uh, we're in between crops, I guess you would say. I mean, not that we don't have plenty of inventory to move uh, from what was in last year, particularly in corn. I mean, we're going we're gonna to come up with over 2 billion bushels of corn moved into the new crop this year. So I, I don't think it has impacted people as much as it will down the road, if, unless we see a price recovery. But certainly by the time we get into harvest time and cash flow needs start to increase, uh, it, it's going to hit the pocketbook pretty readily. And, and again, certainly in the livestock sector, I mean, those hogs are marketed every week. So it, it has already taken, uh, taken its toll there. Is there anything you would do uh, to handle some of this risk uh, as a business person? Well, you know, unfortunately, at this point in time, you know, the, the, the horses are already out of the barn. It's kind of difficult to come back in and take it the other way. Now, it depends on what side of the business you're in. If, you're, if you are a uh, livestock individual, and granted, you might be psychologically kind of beat up because of the price of your, your end product. But, boy, I mean, in my way of thinking, ideal time to step in and start locking in long-term feedstuffs, be that corn, soybean meal, whatever the case may be. So I, I think those are great opportunities to lock that in as we hopefully look for better days here in the, uh, the weeks and months ahead. Yeah, I agree with you. Hopefully so. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be back with more Ag Day. For a free trial of Dan's newsletter, visit thehuberreport.com or call toll free at 888-926-0985. Your next piece of equipment is on machinerypeat.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineRepeat.com. Welcome back to Ag Day with meteorologist Mike Hoffman. Mike, what's new here with the root zone moisture map? Well, uh, we have to, had some areas that were starting to turn dry, turning wet again, like the lower Great Lakes down into the Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley, but other areas just staying dry. Like that bullseye you see right in the middle of the country, northern, uh, southern Missouri and some of the surrounding areas, even though we've had some thunderstorms move through those areas, uh, the satellites from NASA are still showing that area much drier than normal for this time of the year. But you can see the wet areas as well from Florida all the way up to Michigan, back into uh, parts of Nebraska and southwestern Minnesota and a very wet area there, central Pennsylvania down to the mid-Atlantic states. Out west, uh, we've actually turned a little wet parts of the southwest because you uh, have had some moisture over the past few weeks and that's going to continue although it's not uh, quite as much as you saw a couple of weeks ago we're still going to see some afternoon variety showers and thunderstorms today uh, though we'll start off with showers and thunderstorms along the east coast with this very slow moving system continuing to move that way this is the same one that caused the uh, tornadoes and severe weather back in iowa and uh, missouri and arkansas as we uh, saw late last week. So this is taking a while to get out of here. We're seeing another system moving through the Northern Plains into the Western Great Lakes as we head uh, into the day tomorrow. Scattered showers and thunderstorms with that. And then heading through the uh, day tomorrow, you can see that system moving into the Eastern Great Lakes. But notice this one up in the Northern Great Lakes. That's going to be underneath a cutoff low in the jet stream. And that means it's just going to sit there for a while, bringing in the cooler uh, air, a fair amount of clouds and spotty showers for uh, northern Mississippi Valley, Great Lakes area, especially the northern Great Lakes area, as we head even into this weekend. So the precipitation estimate past 24 hours, we've seen some from Florida all the way up into the eastern Great Lakes. Adding in the next 36 hours, you can see some uh, areas, Pennsylvania, New York, Southeastern portions of uh, Ontario seeing a fair amount, like two, three, four inches of rain in places. Otherwise, it's kind of spotty across the uh, northern and central plains, as you can see there. High temperatures today, still triple digits in the southwest. Lots of 90s in Texas and Oklahoma, but more comfortable. Northern central plains into the mid-Atlantic states. Uh, as you can see tonight, we cool things down, 60s and 70s across most of the Corn Belt. And then more of the same tomorrow, although it does cool down behind that next front. Northern plains, highs in the 60s. In places and there is the jet stream. You can see that cutoff low comes in Friday, Saturday, on into Sunday before it moves away. Another one kind of comes in to replace it. Another trough digging in as well. So the trough stays in the east, the ridge in the west. That's kind of the pattern we're in for now. That's a look across the country. Now let's take a look at some local forecasts. 
Heading to Belfield, North Dakota, first of all, lots of sunshine, cooler, high temperature of just 74. Jackson, Mississippi, partly sunny, hot and humid, high of 92. And Trenton, New Jersey, partly sunny with showers and a thunderstorm, high of 79. Up next, celebrating products made in America, including those representing farm country. Plus, why would we talk about the classic holiday film, A Christmas Story in the Middle of Summer? Well, the folks at the Ohio State Fair have a good reason and a buttery way to do so. While global trade is caught up in the turmoil of tariffs, the president is also showcasing products made in the USA. On Monday, the president surveyed an array of Made in America products at the White House. The event comes as financial markets are closely watching his punishing tariffs on imported goods, which have led to trade disputes with China, Canada and several European allies. Products came from each of the 50 states, including a Lockheed Martin F-35 aircraft, a Ford F-150 truck and a Ranger boat. The president says the era of economic surrender is over. After many years of decline, American manufacturing is coming back bigger and better and stronger than ever before. It's happening. We're in the midst of a great economic revival in the United States. We've added 3.7 million new jobs since the election, including more than 370,000 in manufacturing alone. The president says the U.S. for too long has allowed itself to succumb to bad trade deals. He says, quote, that's not free trade, that's fool's trade. The event also focused on cowboy boots from Texas and baseball bats from Pennsylvania. From the ag sector, Kent Feeds of Muscatine, Iowa, was acknowledged for its animal nutrition products. This administration and our country uh, sees a very bright future for manufacturing a very bright future for agriculture and a very bright future for the businesses that, that we serve. Uh, and uh, coming to this event uh, makes us more excited about the future than we've ever been. When Ag Day continues, what image do you think about when someone says for g -Lick? It's a movie line reference. We'll tell you about its connection to agriculture when we come back. In the Country, brought to you by Kubota, See the all-new Commander Pro zero-turn mower at Kubota.com or visit your local Kubota dealer today. No, no, I want to fish it right under cover and I shoot you in a jet with my lead rifle. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Who will ever forget that memorable line from the Christmas classic movie, A Christmas Story? The only thing Ralphie wants under the Christmas tree that year is a Red Ryder BB gun. Even though the storyline took place in Indiana, much of it was actually filmed in Cleveland, Ohio. This year marks 35 years since the movie was released. To celebrate the occasion, this year's annual butter display at the Ohio State Fair showcases several signature characters. In this report, provided by the American Dairy Association Mideast, Barb Consiglio takes us down memory lane. <laughs> Grab your Red Rider BB gun and put on your snowsuit because this year's butter display at the Ohio State Fair is a tribute to a classic film that's become a holiday tradition nationwide. This year's butter display celebrates the 35th anniversary of the holiday classic A Christmas Story, which was filmed in Cleveland, Ohio. The display features Ralphie in his bunny pajamas, a butter Christmas tree decorated with real lights, Randy in his snowsuit, and of course the famous leg lamp. And someone must have triple dog dared the butter calf because she and Flick both have their tongues stuck to a pole as the traditional butter cow looks on. It was a pleasure to work on. Uh, I found myself laughing sometimes just, just thinking about it as I was working. Sculptor spent about 400 hours in a 46 degree cooler to create the nostalgic icons from about 2200 pounds of butter. But before any butter was added, they had to do some work to ensure the display wouldn't be too fragile. There's a steel, usually steel or wood armature inside um, some things can't support uh, the weight, obviously. Cow's legs out of butter couldn't support the weight of a cow out of butter. Each year, the American Dairy Association Mideast chooses a theme and unveils the buttery display to more than a half a million fairgoers who visit the Dairy Products Building at the Ohio State Fair. To pay tribute to a holiday tradition, here at the fair where the butter cow is a tradition is really something special. And this year it's bringing some holiday spirit to everyone's summer. In Columbus, this is Barb Consiglio reporting. 
I've been to this house in Cleveland where exterior shots were taken. It's now a museum. By the way, you can also enjoy ice cream, milkshakes, and cheese sandwiches when you check out the American Dairy Association's butter display at the fair. It runs through August 5th. Well, that's all the time we have this morning. We're glad you tuned in. For all of us here at Ag Day, I'm Betsy Jibben. Have a great day.